Thank you, uh, Chairman Fleming. It's it's a pleasure to be here and to get to speak on this issue um, and uh, Ranking Member Huffman. It's incredibly important to our region, so I appreciate the opportunity. Um, the Endangered Salmon and Fisheries Predation and Prevention Act is, is really of significant importance to our region. Um, I'm also very pleased that Leotis McCormick joining us um, today from the Nez Perce tribe was willing to make the cross-country trip to speak in favor of this legislation. We both agree that it's of great recreational, um, economic, and cultural importance to my home and our region in southwest Washington um, if salmon can continue to successfully recover since they are such a unique and significant resource. Um, I'm honored to have him here today. Mr. Chairman, the Columbia River makes up the entire southern border of my district in southwest Washington, the corner of Washington State, and it rolls out through the mouth. The mouth rolls out and empties into the Pacific. Um, the river system brings economic benefit through the, through the salmon and the steelhead populations. Um, and unfortunately, we continue to have real big problems with the, preda the predation on the Columbia River. And that's why this bill um, is necessary. This is a bipartisan solution that provides tribal members and government resource managers with the means to rapidly respond and remove the most egregious California sea lions from specific areas where they're posing the most threat. Um, the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife estimates that there are 3,000 sea lions residing in the lower Columbia River, and this figure is more than double last year's record of about 1,400. State sh the state studies already show that between 16 and 20 percent of the spring salmon run may be consumed by sea lions, and that's completely unsustainable. Um, you know, there are those who say it is not, they are not a growing problem, and I would answer, in 2014, there was an estimated 4,746 salmonoids immediately below the dam that were consumed by these sea lions. Um, and those estimates for 2015 are already exceeding 7,000 salmonoids. So it is, it is, it's, a, it's not just a, a, a wishful thinking, it's a documented problem. And in and, and minor response to one of the opening statements by Mr. Huffman, um, 98 to 99 percent of returning salmon are clearing the dams. So when we're talking about figures of what is the biggest threat, right now the biggest threat we're seeing really is um, predators, specific egregious predators gorging themselves um, on this endangered species. So lethal take of sea lions is a last resort, but it is a very necessary um, step to protect hundreds of millions of dollars in investment by Northwest residents. Um, on these ESA species, but more importantly, really just to the resource that makes our region unique. You know, the residents I serve um, are very upset increasingly about the impact of this, the sea lion population. Um, salmon are very vital to our way of life, and it's an investment that residents and businesses are funding large portions of the salmon restoration efforts through our hydropower um, uh, utility payments. In, in southwest Washington, about a third of hydro customers' utility bills go to pay for a regional fish and wildlife, pr uh, the program through their wholesale power purchases from Bonneville Power Administration. And I want to ensure that that money that ratepayers are paying <laughs> is going to do what we all want it to do, which is protect these wild runs. Sea lions are also a threat to the recreational access, as access on the Columbia River, which is of great importance to my district. Sea lions are having really a devastating impact on our harbors and docks at the mouth of the Columbia, especially in the East Marina of Astoria. And I'd like if the chair is all right for me to pass this around to the committee members and have some of these pictures entered into the record. But you, you can walk around by these docks and piers and you can't even hear yourself think. These, these animals um, really are starting to cause problems for the economic flow at the mouth, not just the, the, the salmon runs. And honestly, if you've ever been fishing in that area or you've, you've walked the, the banks up and down the Columbia, you've seen a salmon, you've seen a sea lion take salmon off hooks. You see, you walk and you see endangered, you see, well, almost endangered sturgeon, giant sturgeon with a bite taken out of the side. I mean, they're, they're really looking at this, I think, as an opportunity. <laughs> it's easy feeding. Um, and it is destroying a resource that we hold dear. And, I, and you know, one of the things, there's a few more comments I have that I'd like to enter into the record, but one of the things I think is important to consider is 
this isn't just one group of individuals in our region saying it's a problem. It is bipartisan. It's the states. We have tribes. We have, um, you know, we have our utilities. I mean, it is a really collaborative effort to try and, and take care of the most egregious actors, the most egregious predators. We're not trying to decimate the sea lion population. We're just trying to make um, what seems to have been a, a growing feeding frenzy um, trying to bring it back into balance. And this bill, we feel like, is a necessary step for us to go specifically at tar in a targeted way at those most egregious predators. So with that, um, I would like, if possible, to enter these remarks into the record and then yield back.